Good afternoon and welcome to my demonstration of the data sync functionality built in the Power Platform. If you work with Business Central in a multi-company environment, it's likely you're familiar with the common issue of data synchronization. The way that Business Central works means there is only a small amount of information shared between companies, such as permission, users and development. Often companies want to ensure that data within a group is shared and consistent across all the companies. For instance, a chart of account is often set up the same in a group of companies to make the consolidation process easier. Multiple companies in the same group will often sell the same items or will sell different items to the same customers. In these scenarios, ensuring that the information stored in the system is consistent can bring huge value to the organisation. Historically, it was possible to keep data in sync, but only through carrying out development within Business Central. This work could typically only be carried out by your Business Central partner, and for every type of data that you wanted to keep in sync, more development would be required. It also had the limitation that you could only synchronise data between companies in the same database. With the advent of the Power Platform, we decided to take a look at this requirement and see how practical it is to produce a low-code solution using the functionality available out of the box. For this solution, we have used four elements. Business Central for the data, data connectors to access the data in Business Central, data burst to store some basic setup and synchronization data, and Power Automate to carry out the process of pushing and pulling the data. Let's take a look at the proof of concept we've put together. In the browser, we can see the Power Apps Toolkit, where I have a solution containing all the data sync functionality. In it, you can see all of the different flows that will carry out the data sync. I'll give a brief, hopefully not too technical explanation of what the flows do. There are three basic triggers that we are using from the Business Central Connector, create, modify, and delete. Each time one of these actions is carried out on a record in Business Central, we can trigger a flow. We have created a set of flows for each record type that we want to keep synchronized between companies. In the example that we have built, we are synchronizing some setup data, namely payment methods, payment terms, and shipment methods. We are also going to be synchronizing some master data, in this case, customers. As well as the flows, we've also created two tables in the Dataverse. The first is to store the setup for the companies that we want to synchronize. We simply need to populate this when we create a new company in Business Central that we want to synchronize data between. The table stores the company name, the type, whether it's a source or destination, and a company GUID. The second table, if we go back, is used to store the association between the original record in the source company and the synchronized record in the destination companies. As each record is inserted into each destination company, a new record will be created in this table. Then, when a record is modified or deleted in the source company, this table will be used by the flow to determine which record to update in the destination companies. You can see from the columns of data, it stores information about the source and destination companies, as well as identifying information for each record in those companies. So here we have, for instance, the destination company for this particular payment method is in the data sync child euro company and this is the GUID for that particular record in that particular company. We'll now have a very quick look at the structure of one of the flows. If we look at the customer create flow, then when we click on it, we can see each time that the flow has run. Here you can see each time that the flow has run successfully. We can then edit it to see how the flow functions. At its top level, there are five steps that it goes through. The trigger is when a customer is created in the parent company. The next step is to retrieve the record that has just been created. We then set the variables, which are the field values for the new destination record. These are set from the original source record. At this point, we're just populating the customer number and filling in NA in the customer name. We then retrieve a list of the destination companies from the data first table we looked at a moment ago. Then we enter a loop. This loop runs for every company that is retrieved from the previous step. The loop has a number of steps within it that create the destination record and then retrieve it. Finally, the add sync step inserts a record into the sync records table that we looked at previously and stores the identifiable information for the record in each company. 
We're now going to move across into Business Central and see this in operation. In SAS Business Central, I've set up three companies. The first company is the DataSync parent company with a base currency of GBP. I've then set up a DataSync child company, also with a base company of GBP, and a third company, which is a DataSync child company, with a base currency of euros. This company will be used later to show how the Power Automate can also manipulate the data as it moves between companies. The first change we're going to make is a change to the setup in our company. We'll make the changes to the payment terms. I open the payment terms page and I insert a new one here. One of our suppliers has payment terms of 30 days from the end of month. I'll enter the code. I'll then enter the due date calculation. So CM is the end of month plus 30D. And I'll enter a description. So that record's now been inserted in my data sync parent company. In the background, the flows are now running and it should be syncing the data into the other two companies. So we're now moving to those and see what's happened over there. So I'll move into my GBP company. This is the list of the payment terms. I now press F5 to refresh the page. And you can see there that my new end of month entry has been created in this company. And likewise, if I move across into my Euros company and press F5 to refresh this list, I then got the data there. So there it is. We can see that by creating it in one company, we've now got the data synchronizing the setup between all three companies in our database. So the next thing we do is we we'll look at creating some master data, in this case, a customer. I'm back in the parent company now, and I'm on the customer list. I'm going to create a new customer and apply one of the templates, in this case, the business to business template. The template defaults in a number of financial fields onto the customer, such as the posting group, payment terms and payment method, as can be seen on these fast tabs. As this customer has been created in our GBP company and the template doesn't specify a currency code, it remains blank on the customer card. This means it's a GBP customer. We'll leave that as it is, and we'll insert a customer company name and address. Now that we've created the customer and filled out some basic details, We'll move into our child GBP company and look at the customer list. I'll refresh the list and you can see there that the new customer is being created. If I click and go into it, as you can see, a new customer has now been created and the changes to the name and address fields have been moved across, as well as all the other information, such as the posting groups. We now take a quick look in our Euro company. And if we click on the old McDonald's customer in our Euro company, you'll see one subtle difference. Because this company has a base currency of Euros and not GBP, when the customer is moved across, the APIs that move the data between the systems know to translate the currency code. So in this particular instance, the currency code has been filled in as GBP in the Euro company. One last thing that we've done as part of our Power Automate is include a step that sends an email out. So when a new customer is created, it also triggers an email being sent to Dan Cook to notify them a new customer, number 230, has been created in Business Central. That's the end of the demonstration. This is just one example of what can be done with Power Automate. There are numerous other applications, but hopefully this starts to get the creative juices flowing. If there's something you think we could help with, then please feel free to contact your consultant, Catherine, or myself at any time to discuss. Thank you for watching.